Hi there, welcome along to What A Shout and what a show we've got for you. Classic time at Epsom, the Oaks and the Derby. And well, we've got a monumental guest for you, Aidan O'Brien, who has the favourite for the Oaks and the Derby, will be coming on to talk about his runners. Can't wait for that. Also joining us on the show, two superstars from the Racing Post tipping desk, Robbie Wilders and Keith Melrose. Robbie joins us in the studio. Robbie. Cheers, Bruce. The first question I'm going to ask you, is this derby actually going to take place? Oh, it'll take place, yeah, but there'll be uh, a bit of disruption. Um, Animal Rising, I mean, as you know, I'm a vegan, um, but I think there's sort of pick your battles, really. There are a lot of worse things going on with animals, so, I mean, on a purely unrelated to racing point, I don't really understand why they're obsessed with this idea. No, I mean, it is a concern, isn't it? I mean, you know, the fact that there's, there's a train strike is going to really have an impact on the crowd, I think, but it might also impact on the numbers who are coming down to protest. It's a big worry because Epsom is such an open course and it's going to be very hard to police the whole thing. But you, you think... You, I mean, I guess there's three outcomes, isn't there? Security do their job, everything's fine, and the race goes off pretty much to time. Or there's a delay and, and everything yeah. gets shunted back. Or, the worst case scenario, they're just unable to, okay. to Could sort Could you actually it out. see that happening, though? I don't know. I think I the worst, 10 minutes delay, I really. I don't know. I hope you're right. I hope you're right, and then we get it, because it's going to be a fantastic race. Also, Keith Melrose is joining us. Keith, we don't ever really find ourselves in a position to judge the quality of a derby field until i always think until october until after the arc until they've actually run but looking at it now how do you rate this derby field overall um i think just about every derby these days unless there's a really really good horse it tends to get viewed as below average because i think if you look at the 240 odd runnings that a derby they've been it probably would be it's not that in that position it used to be it used to be head and shoulders the best race in the country just about and uh, it's not that anymore um i don't think it's a particularly deep derby looking at it here uh, a lot of very familiar sorts of horses you know a profile it's almost like it's been generated by chat gpt this derby you've got a stout horse of fast track via the dante they've got the o'brien horse that didn't live up to expectations in the guineas but it's still got his reputation you've got the Dottori horse you've got a fool brother that are it's just a lot a lot of familiar faces here so it's a derby that even if you don't think it's the very best derby, you've got a lot to go on in terms of the sort of precedent set by the, the horses that we've seen in previous years. OK, we'll find out who Keith and Robbie fancy for the derby. And as I say, Aidan O'Brien is coming up. Don't miss that. But before then, what an offer we've got for you. 50% off the first three months of Members Club. If you fancy that, stay tuned for this. OK, delighted to be joined now ahead of Classic Weekend by the man himself, the legend Aidan O'Brien, responsible for the favourites for the Derby and the Oaks. We'll start off with the Derby. Aidan, first of all, thank you so much for joining us on What A Shout. August Rodan, um, obviously a disappointing run at, at Newmarket View for everybody. How confident, Aidan, are you that this horse can bounce back and show his true colours this weekend? Um, we've been happy with him since um, the Guineas. Obviously, uh, it's well documented. Uh, we didn't think anything went right from the Guineas, um, but we've been happy with him since. Uh, Bruce, obviously, it's different track, different ground, different distance. So there's a, a lot of things that he hasn't done before. But we're very happy with him since. And he's given you good signals in prep. Has he everything gone to plan since Newmarket? Would you say? Yes, everything has went perfect so far since Newmarket. Excellent. He's drawn 10. I know it's basically since the, in the last 10 years, only one horse drawn lower than seven has won the derby. Your three are 10, 12 and 14. Are you happy enough with those? How much does that affect your tactics? I don't, I don't think so. The lads will work that out themselves. Obviously, they'll, they know their horses and they know the track and, and obviously they know the draws now. So they'll obviously work that out. So hopefully it'll be OK. 
And just positionally, where would you ideally like to see him, do you think, Aidan, as they turn into the home straight? Handy or coming off the pace? Yeah, they, they, we never really uh, tie the lads down, really, wherever they're comfortable, really. And uh, wherever they'll find themselves, that's where they'll be. And, and that's always the way, really, because nobody knows ever what's going to happen in a race and uh, um, oh, it's going to unfold, really, until those gates open. Sure. And obviously, Aiden, the, the one thirty start to accommodate the cup final this year is earlier than normal, and that's affected travel plans. You normally come over later. I believe your derby horses are over today, are they? Is, is everything going fine in terms of the journey? And do you have any concerns that, that that change from the normal routine might affect things? No, I, sure, I suppose it's obviously it's different, Bruce. So uh, the Phillies are there already. They arrived there this morning. So the Colts are, are left. Uh, so And hopefully they'll be there in the morning. So um, like obviously that's uh, more things that are kind of out of our hands. And, and hopefully the journeys will go well for them. Sure, absolutely. Hey, and I'm interested to know... What you do in terms of weighing up the opposition, do you tend to keep a really close eye on, on the derby as it unfolds, as all the trials take place? Or do you kind of wait till the field has fallen into place and have a really good look? You know, how hard do you, do you sort of examine the opposition? Yeah, no, sure. We, obviously, we like to watch the trials like everybody else. Um, and, and obviously, they are only trials. And, and nobody will really know until they're all put together. And uh, that's when everybody learns... Uh, what the best middle distance goal to our Philly is, and and that's what uh, that's why uh, obviously Epson is the ultimate test. It's it's difficult. It's uh, a very undulating. It's it's tough. Um, it it swings left and it swings right and it's up and it's down and it's conjures everywhere. So it, it is a an ultimate test really. Um, and uh, until they're put together uh, in a race, uh, nobody really knows what's going to happen. Absolutely. But having looked at the field here, are there one or two horses in particular that catch your eye and, and think, you know, could could really give you a lot to think about? Yeah, we should, I suppose we treat them all with total respect, Bruce. That's what we always do, because, as you know, like um, you've seen some very long shots win the Derby and Oaks. Uh, so anything is possible. So we, we treat them all with the same amount of respect, really. Sure. And he's, he's taken on the mantle of favouritism this week. Would you say he's the right favourite? Are you surprised he's at the head of the market or, or would you think that's the correct assessment from the bookmakers? Yes, we don't ever really look at that either because it doesn't affect us or the horse. Um, it's an opinion from everybody else really, isn't it? So, um, And obviously uh, nobody knows because it hasn't been trying and hasn't happened before. So, so it's only an opinion and obviously everybody's entitled to their opinion. Absolutely. So August Rodin aiming to give you a ninth derby. Um, you've won 10 Oaks and you've got the favourite in Save the Last Dance. An incredible performance at Chester last time. Um, going into this race, Aidan, how does she compare to some of the other horses that you've had that have gone on to win the Oaks? Do you, do you have a really good feeling about her that she's the re real deal and can go on and give you... I mean, you're, I think you're looking to win it for the fourth time in a row. It should just be incredible. How confident are you with her? Yes, yeah, listen. Obviously, we've only seen what everybody else has seen. She doesn't do a lot of work at home. And uh, in, in, she won her maiden over a mile and a quarter in, in soft to heavy ground, and then she went to Chester and won in soft ground again. Um, she seemed to get the trip very well. She seemed to handle the ground very well twice. She has ran on it. So really, obviously, this is on different track, different ground. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. Obviously, she's by Galileo, which usually handle. A better ground and, and she's out of a scat daddy mayor would suggest better ground too but uh, she has a little bit of knee action and that's probably why she was handling the soft ground so it will be very interesting to see will she be as good on a uh, good ground or not yeah it's going to be fascinating and obviously john uh, the gosdens have got two really good looking fillies up against you i mean the markets is a three horse race i know that you'd obviously you know you, you've said you treat them all with respect but is it the particular, is it the Gosden fillies that you're really looking at as the ones that could give your one the, the, the sternest test? Yeah, I, I obviously, uh, honestly, we, we would treat them all with a, a lot of respect and we wouldn't take any of them for granted. And, and obviously, uh, uh, John's two fillies have won their trial as well. Um, but listen, it, like we've seen it so many times, you know, there's a lot, a lot of good fillies in there. Absolutely. And, and Aidan, you know, you've won Derby and Oaks with fancied runners and, and also with long shots. I mean, 50 to 1, 40 to 1, 25 to 1. You've got two at bigger prices in each of the races. If you were to take out the Derby or the Oaks with, with one of the ones that aren't at the head of the market, which of those four longer price contenders do you think might outrun their odds? 
Yeah, well, I suppose the four, the two horses in the Derby, we were very happy with Antonio that won at Chester. Uh, we were very happy with the horse that was second in Chester. He doesn't want soft ground, and it was soft ground that day, and he was second in the in the in the Vaz. And then in the trial, uh, one of the, the Camelot filly that ran in Linkfield obviously wasn't ideal. That the plan was to go to Linkfield for grass, and it got switched on to the all weather, and the pace was very slow. And then the Justify filly, uh, we think she's a very smart filly, but she's a baby, and she's improving with every run. So I suppose the answer is like they're all a very well bred uh, fillies and colts with great physiques and and they're all entitled to be there and like obviously if we didn't think they had a chance they wouldn't be there uh, Bruce really absolutely and I know answer me this do you go into Epsom weekend excited or do you just see it as a pressure situation that you just can't wait to get over with what what's it like when you go into this because it's such a pivotal weekend for the whole operation isn't it. Yeah, no, like obviously we're looking forward to it like everybody else and we're looking forward to see what does happen when they do meet uh, on that track over that distance because really nobody knows and, and like we'll be a, we'll be a looking forward to it as much as everybody else. Uh, we think everything has went well in their preparations and they're as good as we can have them for the day and then obviously we'll just accept the result and, and look forward to seeing the races and see what's going to happen. Absolutely. And unfortunately, we have to talk about this. You know, you'll be well aware, as anyone is, that there are protests planned at Epsom. Um, it's not something any of us want, obviously. I mean, we all know because we work in racing and we love it that, you know, these horses get treated fantastically. But, hey, you know, if they're going to listen to anyone in racing, it's going to be you. What kind of message would you have for these people who have question marks about racing and whether it's cruel and just the welfare of the participants? Yes, just well, obviously just asking everybody to be sensible and think of the people in racing, the horses in the racing and everybody involved and just be sensible and uh, like everybody knows what's right and wrong and, and uh, you just hope that uh, um, everybody sees uh, what the right thing is to do is. Absolutely. Aidan hey, no, O'Brien, thank you so much for joining us on What A Shout. Best of luck this weekend. Pleasure, Bruce. Thanks very much. Fantastic to hear from Aidan there, absolutely brilliant. Right then, let's get stuck into the big races taking place at Epsom on Friday and Saturday. And we'll start with the 310 at Epsom on Friday. It's the Group 1 Coronation Cup. Just five runners, but a really, really open affair. Uh, West over favourite, Emily Upjohn. You've got Hurricane Lane, uh, Point Lonsdale for the Aidan O'Brien team and the German Raider Tunis. There are the prices on the screen, as you can see, just the five of them, but they're all good ones. Robbie, lead on. What do you make of yeah, this? Yeah, it's quality, isn't it? You, you got the two hard luck stories from the Oaks and the Derby last year. In uh, Emily Upjohn should have won the Oaks, basically, shouldn't she? Tuesday had the dream run, she missed the kick badly. And then, I'm not saying Westover would have beat Desert Crown, but he definitely would have finished a, a close second at worst. Um, the problem with Emily Upjohn is, first time out, she's a very keen sort of horse. Um, they're both running the keen George and the Emily, and Westover, they're both too keen, pulled their chance away. That would concern me. Um, I know Westover had that brilliant run behind Equinox in the Shima Classic. But I don't know, I, I, I quite like Point Lonsdale, actually. Um, just think he sort of keeps a bit back for himself over a mile and two. I know he's got to step up on his Huxley stakes when in form, but I think he's definitely going to improve for a mile four. His brother to Broom, obviously. Um, yeah, it's, it's open. Even the German horse I'd, I'd give a squeak to because, I mean, on ratings, he's only one pound off the highest rated. Uh, looked, looked brilliant last year in some of his German form, but uh, it'll be Point Lonsdale, but yeah, fascinating race to start us off. Mm, what do you make of it, Keith? Tough one, isn't it? Very tough one. Um, I'm far more interested in it than I would have been had, say, Desert Crown done what we hoped he did at uh, Sandown last week, you know, because the belt's pretty much vacant among these best horses now looking ahead for the arc and whatnot in the uh, in the autumn. And you've got some of the leading candidates to take that sort of place here, you know. You've got Westover, who was that very unlucky Derby uh, third last year, Emily Upjohn, who, if she can take that racing, she's going to be up there getting that that wait for sex allowance in Hurricane Lane, who basically had a write off in 2022 of a season, but he, he was a really exciting horse in 2021, very adaptable, good turn of pace, could be a, a, a sort of dark horse for the likes of the arc, which he's already finished third in, of course. But I think if there's a bet in this particular race, it might actually be the German horse, you know, at the prices, because his form, Robbie says the form's only a pound off. Look, I, I think 
these other horses don't have a 10 length win on bad, a bad ground group one to, to call on and he does but since then he's gone over to Japan and he just got no run at all in that Japan Cup and he looked like he handled um, quicker conditions well enough so you wouldn't think he's just one of these tail end of season bad ground German horses that you sometimes get he's, he's, a, he's a legit such sort this and the, his German form does stack up I mean you only tend to get one good one at a time in Germany but the rest of them tend to be low to mid 110s horses and his form certainly looks in, in tune with that and he's beaten them all handsomely they're never fit for the, the reappearances these sort of, Germany and France have got a far more sort of prep race culture uh, than we would have in Britain and Ireland these days I can I can take that run last time uh, out of the equation and yeah it's I would be more excited for the arc about a, a couple of more of these but I'm not saying he should be five six times the price because he's had a you can imagine it'll be prep right up for this race and then have another prep for an autumn campaign presumably with the arc in mind and so the boys are going for the two biggest price runners in the field in the coronation point. Lonsdale for Robbie and Tunez for Keith. Right then, classic time now, 4.30 on Friday. It's the Bet Fred Oaks and Aidan O'Brien has the favourite in Save the Last Dance, who was just pretty much ridiculous last time. 22 lengths. That's what you win three run of three mile two fall on chases at Fontwell on heavy ground. And you don't do that at Chester. It's absolutely outrageous. She's five to four. Soul Sister, nine to four. Running line, 11 to two. Both of those are stable mates from the Gosdens. And then we're out to 12 to one. Internal Hope and 18 bar. So Keith Melrow saved the last dance. Came from, you know, relative obscurity to, to really, really advertise herself as a potential superstar. Too good to be true or believe what you saw at Chester? Um, I mean, the thing is, you, you look at ratings, time analysis, previous race standards, all of them would have put Save the Last Dance higher than a racing post rating of 116. So I think, I think it's generally widely believed it can't be as good as it looks there, because if it is, then, you know, she's she's something else. It's, conditions here are potentially going to be quite different. It was soft that day. Uh, it's really interesting that she's come from nowhere, isn't it? It's less than nine weeks since she went off 20 to 1 for a Leopardstown maiden. And all of a sudden, you know, I think when Ryan Moore squeezed it at Chester, I really don't think he was expecting the response he got because he got quite vigorous for about three strides until he realised he'd taken off. But the more I looked at the race, the more I thought, I'm actually probably going to take her on. It's, it, it, I really think this is a two-horse race. You know, it's, it's a big ask to get more than a hand, a very small handful of genuinely good fillies over a mile and a half in early June these days. And Soul Sisters win at York in the Musidora. It was... It was a very steadily run race. It was on quicker ground. It was described as good, but it was much quicker than that. Uh, and she's just absolutely taken off. She's put six, seven lengths in the last couple of furlongs into fillies with group one form behind them. That's another important thing to remember. Save the last dance, beat horses that were coming in from handicaps for the most part. But a soul sister had Nova Kai in second, who'd been fillies mile second. Uh, just buried her. Showed a really, really, really good turn of pace. Epsom, we know what it's like on the run from Tatnam Corner, quite a long downhill run. Horses that can really show that acceleration have a big advantage. The ground's not going to be anything like as slow as it was at Chester. So even though you look, see the last dance's form has got to be viewed at better, no matter how dim a view you take of, of that form, I just think conditions, Soul Sister's proven or closer to being proven under the conditions and at double the price. I think she narrowly is the bet, but I think, to be honest, a reverse forecast might be the real way to go because I think I can see these two fillies coming lengths and lengths clear. I think they're head and shoulders. Interesting. So Keith fancies Frankie for yet another classic in his final season. Real musical theme here, isn't it, Rob? You've got Save the Last Dance and mm. Soul Sister. Sorry, Soul Sister. Is that the name of a, a song or an it's artist? A, no, it's, a, it's a lyric, my Hey, Sister, Soul oh, Sister. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, kitschy, kitschy. That's it, yeah. Yeah, from Moulin so Rouge. So who is going to call the tune Aguilera. at Epsom? Uh, save the last dance for me. Um, I, I agree with Keith that it's all about the first two. I can't really have Running Lion. I mean, she's the clear third favourite. Uh, the, that, that new market form, the second's come out of and stuff since, odds on. Um, but Save the Last Dance, yeah, you look at the... I'm not one for times. I like to get a bit more into times, but she she ran the last two furlongs quicker than the five furlong horses on that day. I think, and the Robbie, early surely, with, with a race like that, it, visually, it's outrageous. So you, that's a one race where you absolutely do need the time to, yeah, you, to confirm what exactly. you saw, isn't it? And it did do that. If you look at the early pace, that was quick as well. So it's not like they were, they were finishing and, and she was the only horse quicker. And I'm not saying as much of a race, but... It's just that the ground is an obvious concern because she's not encountered that. But with the scat daddy side of her pedigree, US dirt bred, 
and a lot of Galileo's preferred good ground. I'm, I'm expecting even better potentially. Uh, it wasn't much a race at Chepster, but she looks a superstar, and I'd have her form over Soul Sisters in the Musadora uh, by a few pounds. I think, I think they'll finish well clear, but I'd have Save Last Dance winning by two or three. Okay, so the boys both think it's a two horse race. Keith thinks that it will be Soul Sister, and Robbie goes for the favourite, Save the Last Dance. That's the Oaks. What a race that should be. On now to Saturday's Epsom action, and the first race we're going to look at is the 245, which is a new race. Everybody loves the dash on Derby Day, so much so that they've introduced a new dash, a second one for three-year-olds. Here we go, wide open, 14 runners, JM Jungle, 5-1 to one favourite, Russet Gold, 6, Tattersall, 7, 3 on 8-1. to one. They are Cantacan, Estate and Grace Angel, and it's 10 bar, and Keith Melrose, you were desperate for this to be included in the running order, so have you sussed one for us? It's going to be a great race. This is a great addition to the calendar. You know, these three-year-old sprinters, it's just about a last chance for these three-year-olds that go so fast and can't help themselves. And where better to give them that race than Epsom? So it's a really, really interesting looking race. And we've actually got a good bit of form coming into it. I think a lot of it's going to focus on that race at York that GM Jungle was second in, but there's two or three others in here that run in that race too and, and the one I'd be faintly interested in here is, is Miss Brazen for uh, the Easterbys, uh, Mick and, and David. You know, he she ran in that race and was, was sixth, but she was still bang there until the last half furlong or so. She was more towards the other side of the track than the principals. GM Jungle got a really good toe through the race. The winner came from right out of the back, but Miss Brazen was always in the firing line and just got a little bit tired in the end. I thought she, yeah, uh, I thought she shaped pretty well. This is a the the, the dash or the five furlong Epsom uh, draw could be a funny one because you can you tend to get them on both extremes of the wings and there's a lot of pace in the low numbers here. Miss Brazen's in three, uh, and I can I can see it being a race where down the middle is more the place to be, and Miss Brazen is is a little bit big for me. Okay, many thanks, Keith. Robbie, the three-year-old dash. What are your thoughts? Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very interesting. I think it's quite a good addition to the card, actually, um, if you love sprinters. I wouldn't say I necessarily love them, but they do present decent betting opportunities. Um, I quite like this Roger Varen horse in here, Russet Gold. Uh, Well-related, uh, half-brother to Dai who is uh, almost won a Group 1 as a juvenile for the stable a couple of years ago, and St. Lawrence, who's that very smart sprinter. Uh, running off 87, first time out of Harry Davis booked. Um, some of the juvenile form reads well. She's definitely going to get better with age, I'd say. And... Um, yeah, she's ready first time up. Uh, I don't know if wide is the place to be, but if they sort of there is a bit of a collapse uh, with the early with the lower stalls, then I could see this horse finishing quite well. Okay, so that's who the boys fancy in the three-year-old dash. The traditional dash takes place at three twenty. Twenty runners go to post. Fast and furious, always an absolutely incredible race to watch. Changing fortunes, blink and you miss it. And it's eight to one the field. Lehu and Live in the Moment are currently vying for favouritism on that mark. Nine to one is Clarendon House. And then we've got a load on ten to one. Ancient Times, Angleland, Mockatil, Mountain Peak, and Sampa Seven, along with Vintage Clarets. Robbie, you can go first. A head scratcher in <sighs> Very much so. Um, I've got my eye on Kane from the Dark for a big handicap this year. He's he looks like he's on the way back. Um, he, he ran quite well at Newmarket last time when he was third that day. But you go back for his form last year, he was, he was verging on sort of Group 2 class. Um, he is seven now, he's not quite as good, but he's down to 91. And his RPRs are going back in the right direction. So he's quite a big price. Uh, he'd be my flyer, but you just never know. Uh, you're going to need luck in running, aren't you? But I'll watch with intrigue. Mm, excellent. OK, thank you very much. Robbie Keith, what do you make of the dash? Oh, it's always a great race to dash. I mean, you... Like it's 55 seconds or something, the, the standard there. So it's a really, really quick five furlongs at Epsom. And it suits a very specific type of sprinter. You know, I love these races that, that are sort of a niche within a niche and the dash very much fits into that category. There's quite a few I could be interested in. I've got it in my head that somebody like Lookout Louis, who was didn't seem fit at Chester, but he seems he's going to suit Epsom, this horse. One of the quickest striders I've seen. But the one that, that I might have a two or three in there, try and do wing a massive tricast or something but the one that I'm going to put up for as a main selection is Ancient Times who at Newmarket last time just showed so much speed in that race that Spring Bloom won and just got a little bit tired at the end I like the draw in 16 16 of about 21 you know I, I always think that rail at Epsom has got a lot going for it and also got Kaya Fraser on board who's a very interesting seven pound claimer uh, kept um, kept claim over the winter kept powders dry and now it was back to his riding uh, really well but £7 claimer on in this race, and even though she's not ridden at Epsom, 
what does it take to do? Point and shoot at Epsom, isn't it? So go, you can go too fast over five at Epsom, unbelievably, but the tactics are going to work themselves out on ancient times. And uh, near enough to the rail, I can see him blasting off and, and maybe never getting caught. From the five furlong dash to the classic one mile, four furlong trip of the main event itself, the Betfred Derby due off at 1.30. I say due off, obviously protests are planned. Fingers crossed they don't materialise and the great race goes off to time. Here's the latest market, 5-2 to two, August Rodin, 7-2 military order, 5 passenger, 11-2 arrest, 11-1 to one, the Foxes, 12-1 to one, Spruill, 14 Dubai Mile and White Birch and it's 16 bar. Really, really intriguing race this, looking forward to it, no end and Keith Melrose lead on. How confident are you and why are you so confident if you are? Uh, well, I'm definitely having a bet in the Derby. Well, you bet in the Derby anyway, but August Rodan makes the market a little bit. That price, he's held up by sort of the power of that Aidan O'Brien perception, isn't it? The chosen one from that yard almost always gets more respect than, than merited. I know it's going back a few years now, but fame and glory within our favourite to beat see the stars in the Derby. That's the power that these O'Brien uh, these O'Brien whispers can can have. So I'll be getting against him. I didn't much like military orders when at Lingfield in the context of winning a derby, and I think he might be there slightly on the basis of of who he's related to and who trains him as much as anything else. That said, the horse I fancy the most uh, Michael Stout's horse that he ran in the Dancy. Uh, it's passenger. You know the he, he didn't debut until the Wood Ditton. Uh, he won that very, very well. And then he's gone straight to the Dante, shaped like the best horse in that race. You know, he got chopped off twice in the run. King's got looking very, very confident before both of those incidents and, and finished well to finish third in the Dante to the Foxes, which was what, 27, 28 days after his, his race course debut? Just exactly the sort of horse that Stout does well with. And, and a derby that, you know, I, I think the derby will overcomplicate a little bit. It's back a good horse in the Derby, and I think Passenger is potentially that good horse. The other one I'll mention that I might do in a forecast or in a swinger or something that I think is is too big a price, even though I wouldn't say is as likely a winner as Passenger is Sproul. That uh, that win at Leperstown was really quite impressive, actually. Extended right away, having travelled really powerfully. Um, it wasn't stopping at the line, and yeah, it's. Um, I just think if he was, if he was. You had that pit. If he was a stout horse that had been fast tracked by the Dante, if he was an Appleby brother to the a horse that had won the Derby before, he would be in with your four or five to one shots here. But he's not. It's Jessica Harrington, not got you know the sort of he's not from one of those big breeding operations with the, all those classic winners down the years to call on. And as a result, he's twelve to one. I don't think he should be. Well, that would be some story. Jessica Harrington, obviously battling cancer, hugely respected, much loved figure in Irish racing. She did a fantastic interview with David Jennings in the Thursday Racing Post and. Uh, I don't think there'd be a dry eye in the house if Spruill won for her. So good luck to Jessica Harrington. Robbie, what your, what's your Derby verdict? Yeah, I quite like Spruill as well. Um, just a bit of education for you. Named after a basketball player. Really? Lateral Spruill. Lateral Spruill? Yeah, you know, it's kind of a strange, one of those strange like American names like Brooks Koepka. Um, yeah, I just Googled that just now, a bit of insight. Um, yeah, I like him. Uh, something that Keith didn't touch upon actually is that Spruill is uh, also, he's not encountered this quick ground, but... His dam won a firm ground grade one in Woodbine. So I've yeah, so had, she won the she won the EP Taylor on firm. All other forms on soft ground. That yeah. was weird. Yeah, it's uh, it was quite a mixed one, but she did have that form in the North America. Exactly. Yeah. So just just using that as a kind of pointer that I wouldn't be as concerned um, about the the switch to quicker ground. A bit like Save Last Dance in that respect. Uh, but yeah, on a line through up and under, it was obviously closely tied with uh, uh, White Birch, who was second in the Dante. The Sproul has to be a shorter price than he is. And the other one is uh, Dubai Mile, who I've not really heard anyone speaking about, to be honest, um, which is kind of surprising. He was obviously well ahead of Augusta Rodin in the, in the Guineas. Uh, that trip was always going to be way too sharp for him. But his juvenile form is getting franked. So there's absolutely no way he should be sort of double three times the price of a rest. Uh, he beat him, obviously, as a juvenile. Um, but, yeah, I think it's, it's very open, but you want to be taking on Augusta Rodin because... A, he was terrible in the Guineas. I know he's trained by the, probably the best trainer in the world, but his juvenile form just keeps getting knocked. And uh, Dubai Mile and Spruill will be my two against the field. Jolly good. What an intriguing derby we've got this year. So Keith fancies Passenger and Robbie fancies Spruill. Right before we get the naps, do you fancy picking up £200 in free bets? If you do, here's how.
Okay, let's get the naps before we finish up. We'll start with Robbie Wilders. Yeah, nap time. Uh, I'm going to go for the, the race that was on the running order that Keith vetoed, uh, the Diamid Stakes. Uh, Regal Reality, um, Highland Avenue is quite a short price here. The pair met in the, uh, in the Gordon Richards Stakes at Newmarket last time. Uh, Regal Reality has a lot of ground to make up, but it was on soft ground. He never, he never would have appreciated that. Uh, I just think this Highland Avenue is a bit too short. as his first, first run following a massive layoff. I could certainly see him bouncing. And... Um, yeah, Rig Rally just always steps forward for his first run, and he's about five times the price, so he'll do for me. Okay, if you're wondering what Rig Rally is, it's Regal oh, come on. Reality. <laughs> Keith Melrose. Um, I'm going to go true to form. I'm going to double down on the dash. Not the three year old dash necessarily, that does look a very tricky race, but ancient times in the dash for me. Okay, and in the Derby, there's a horse who ran really, really well in the Dante. An unfashionable stable from Ireland. I think if you can get five places and 14 to one, White Birch is a great bet. Those are your naps. That was What A Shout. Dave Orton's back next week for another show. Hope you can join us. In the meantime, do bet responsibly. Do enjoy some great racing. Keep your fingers crossed that those protesters stay off the course so we can enjoy the derby. <laughs>